Hi, I'm Kevin Borgstead, and I'm really happy that you found your way to Tai Chi with Kevin. Even if you've been involved in Tai Chi only for a short while, you've probably read or heard or seen something to the effect that an awful lot of Tai Chi is based on certain key principles, key ideas, key things that you need to do to do Tai Chi the right way. Well, I'm not so concerned about doing Tai Chi the right way because I know that every teacher teaches it a different way. So how do you know what the right way is? What I do think is important is finding ways to do Tai Chi and Qigong for that matter in ways that you start to get the benefits of doing Tai Chi and Qigong. Now that is based on certain key ideas foundational principles, if you want to call it. I generally refer to those as the first steps in Tai Chi. One of those is breathing. Obviously, you need to breathe. Another is body alignment. There's continuous motion. I want to go all the way through, through the whole thing. Um, there's focus. That's the, the moving and meditation part. And then, of course, there's uh, balance and weight shifting as you move from one position to another. I've got a series of, of short discussions of each of those topics, followed by sort of pulling it all together. Um, come with me and let's take a look and uh, see if it's anything that you want to do. Come on in. When I talk about these uh, first steps of Tai Chi, the fundamental principles that help you get the most benefit out of your Tai Chi practice, it's hard to say that one, one of these principles is more important than others. But if I had to pick one, this is it. This whole notion of weight shifting and balance. That probably has the most immediate and direct impact to, to your health and well-being of, of any of them. They're all good. They're all important. But I think this one you're going to notice first. The idea is, is that as you're learning to shift your weight in a controlled manner and be aware of that weight shift, that does really two things. One, it helps you improve your balance, which gets you from falling down, which is a good thing. And it also helps you to, to do some things that strengthen your legs, which for me personally is a pretty big deal because that means I've got more confidence in my movement. I'm more able to do things. And the more I'm able to do, the more I do. And the cycle goes, and I just feel a whole lot better about a lot of things. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Move the chair out of the way. Okay, so for starters, stop the chair from turning. That's the first thing we do. So if you stand reasonably straight, feet shoulder width, first thing I want to do is kind of just sway a little bit. Okay. Now as I do that swaying, I feel my weight shift to this leg, to this one. It's like my foot presses into the floor. So I know there's a weight shift, but I'm not doing anything to manage that. You know, I'm, I'm making myself sway, obviously. But if I use this leg to push me over, and pour the weight from this leg to that leg. And then push it back up and down. So that I kind of rise up and then sink on the other leg. I feel that more. If you try this, I think you'll feel the same. Now, if I come down on 
this leg, then once I sense that all of my weight is there, I can lift this foot a little bit. See, I can pull it all the way up. You don't have to if you don't want to. I come over to this leg and I center my weight, get my balance, and I can lift this foot. And I can come back over here and do this one. And if you practice that a little bit, you get more aware of when you're balanced, when you're centered on your weight on one foot or the other. Now, you don't have to do that just side to side. You can do that forward. Shift your weight forward, and eventually that back foot can come up, and then go back. Now, if you're not used to doing this, you're going to wobble. I know I did for a long time. That's okay. Be very careful with yourself. If you need to, have a chair close by. Practice it in your kitchen next to the kitchen counter. And put your weight on one leg. Lift the other one, step forward, and shift to your weight is on that leg. And then when you're balanced, you can step with the other foot. You can practice doing that, and we do this in some of the classes that I lead. Just step all the way across the room. Step forward, back. That's going to help you. At first, you'll probably do it a little more quickly because you're not used to balancing. You're not used to that weight shifting. But if you work towards doing it more slowly so that it looks like this, what you'll find, your legs will get stronger. You will be more aware of what's happening with your balance. You'll be more confident with what you're doing. Now let's practice that with something else. We'll actually go side to side. Our old friend waving hands like clouds. I don't have a lot of space here, so we're not going to go very far. But if we start shoulder width, and we start waving hands, and we step to the side, and wave over and bring the other foot in, switch, wave the other way, and we're going to step out. But now look, I can pick this foot up. My weight is all on this leg. I step out, and shift to the other side. All the weight's over here, so I can pick this foot up. Now you probably notice something. You may or may not have thought about this before. I can't take a step if there's weight on this leg. I can't pick it up. Weight's there. I've got to have the weight over here before I can step. Think about that a little bit. Practice it. You'll like it. You'll get some goodie out of it. See you next time.